Brendan, 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 Brendan. Yes? I have a great idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I know we're doing Young Einstein this week for the podcast. Right. Okay. But I have managed to secure a venue and Prince for... Prince? Prince not, is coming? No, he's dead. Oh, oh. Rest in peace. Didn't even know he was sick. Yeah. Who knew? Neither did anybody else. But I have film prints for, okay. now get this, <sighs> a Yahoo Serious Film Festival. Uh, you know, I, I gotta go watch the one movie, so I gotta get going. No, 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 no. Look, look, this way you'll be able to truly experience. A serious filmmaker. Um, a Yahoo serious filmmaker. Mm, I've got plans. I haven't told you what day it is. Yeah, I, I, I'm busy that day. But I, I haven't told you what day it is. Uh, what day is it? It's next week. Yep, I got a it, thing. I got an appointment. All week? All week. A uh, series of tests. It's, uh, I got a really bad cold. No, no, no. Brandon, I feel you're making stuff up here, so just let me let me tell you. <sighs> Yahoo Serious, I know we've only got the you're really only familiar with the one, but he has three movies where he writes and produces and directs and acts. He does it all. He is a down under version of Tyler Perry. Now, Nathan, what about mm-hmm. that would make you think I'd want to see it? Well, I'll tell you this. He only plays one part in each movie. Okay, points. Okay, and he's not real heavy-handed with the religiousness or anything like that. Okay, points. Okay, and, and I mean, all of them, about an hour and a half each. You could just breeze right through them. All right, that's sounding okay. All right, so what do you think of Kitten Pot Pie? Goodbye. That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Whoa, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Ladies and germs Laven Maven. Troy Laven. <laughs> it's uh, me, Troy Laven. No, I kid. It's Brendan. And it's Nathan. What were they thinking? Right? Is that the Why end? Why are we doing this? I don't know. Okay. We it's should the carnival. It's, stop here. It's the carnival version of our podcast. <laughs> hooray, hooray, hooray. What were they thinking? Oh no, let's not repeat the audio problems of that episode. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, yes. This and for those of you tuning in for the first time, this is a podcast about uh, bad to questionable movies. Yep. And we have a uh, doozy this week. We do. But it is actually it is the first time on this podcast that we're tackling a serious film. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we know that, folks? It's because it's the first credit in the movie. It's a the serious name of the production film. company. Yep. <laughs> and we know that because it's one of the first credits in the movie. Right, it's the name of the production company. <laughs> A serious film. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about 1988's Young Einstein. Mm-hmm. Starring, Oinstein. written by... <laughs> Oinstein. Oinstein. Young Einstein, Young mate. Right. That's the entire title. <laughs> oh, God. Guys, listeners, get ready for a lot of bad Australian accents. <laughs> get ready for 90 minutes of this. <laughs> uh, if only we had had an Australian guest to just uh, audibly roll their eyes every time we do that. I can't believe this. Who would they think we are? <laughs> what were they thinking? Crikey. Crikey. <laughs> I hear they get quite upset when you say stuff like crikey. Shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say crikey once in this movie. What the fuck? Because apparently it's it's really not a thing. 
Let's get my that gets my lowest rating yet. Two kangaroos <laughs> and a half a wallaby. <laughs> Uh, everybody in Australia is like, <sighs> bye. <laughs> right? <laughs> Next. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, but yes, Young Einstein, starring, written by, directed by, produced by, probably composed, actually, yep. yeah, and probably edited. He, I think his mom did catering. That's not a joke. I think that was one of the trivia items. <laughs> the, uh, Low budget. It says low budget, but I look into it, and this movie had like an $8 million marketing budget in the U.S., mm -hmm. so the, maybe the movie was low budget, but when you got all the money together, it was like $10 million. Yeah. But it was a big hit in Australia. In the United States, not so much. <laughs> uh, young Einstein, let's break it down. I ain't gonna lie, man. I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid. This was my first time. Yeah. <laughs> I had heard of this. This is like one of those movies like I'd heard about for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's just like that movie with Yahoo Serious, and it's a name <laughs> you can't really forget. No. And I'm like, for the longest time too, and I know we talked about this before we went on the air, he had a couple of other movies, but for the longest time I thought this was like a one-off thing where he just did a movie and it like, you know, it failed but gained a cult following and then that was pretty much it for him. But I guess he did two other movies. But I mean, this was his only like hit, I think. Yes, it's the only one. In that Australia. Got, it. Well, it's the only one that get any traction in the mainstream at all. Mm hmm So... Well, Yahoo Serious, we might as well get this going. <laughs> I do want to note, though, actually, before we get this going, that uh, I don't know if you knew this, but Yahoo Serious tried to sue Yahoo? Yes. For for the name rights? Right. Uh, let's just say nothing happened. Did not work out well, no. Did, did not work out for anyone. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it worked out for Yahoo, but... For the most part. I mean, I think Google little, did a little bit better than them. If his name yeah. had been Google Serious, he might have... <laughs> ah! <laughs> if his name is Google Yahoo, he could have sued both of them. Right? Oh. He was he was a, a brain before his time. <laughs> so, speaking of brains, he plays Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. No, not, not an Australian parody. He is playing Albert Einstein. Right. There is no, like, it's Albert Einstein's Australian cousin. No, no, no. This is an alternate history movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little disconcerted with how this started. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. Because he's just got a steel bowl on his head giving himself a haircut. Mm -hmm. He's got this kind of, like, weird, like, far away but cross-eyed look at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And he cuts his hair, and I'm like, oh, so is this, like gonna start with his hair being short and then we're gonna like flash back nope it's just all under the bowl mm -hmm. it's the uh, australian bowl cut but anyway he is narrating his own life story and it's a serious film he grows he, he grew up on an apple farm mm -hmm. in tasmania with the super realistic tasmanian devils <laughs> yes. that sound like ewoks <laughs> i thought wicket was gonna show up i don't think warwick davis was in this <laughs> I I would I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> I'll take the role, mate. No problem. No problem. There there were enough little people in this movie. Oh, there's definitely one playing the Tasmanian Devil. There's one playing the Tasmanian Devil. There's one who's playing the uh, foreman at the brewery. There is another one just randomly taking pictures in the park at a gazebo. Australia, let us know in your uh, film culture. Are little people just inherently funny? <laughs> like, without a joke? Like, just just that they're there? <laughs> well, I mean, you think about it. The, uh... The men Without Hats? The Safety Dance? Aren't they an Australian band? Uh... I th oh, yeah, I think so. They're Aus they're Canadian, but they're... Ba like, they're... I don't know, there's something... Some basis in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not thinking of Men at Work? Oh, maybe I am thinking of Men at Work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, everybody's yelling at us. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wrote down that I wrote down that I was going to say to you. I thought you said this was a comedy. This movie quickly informs me that this is in fact a serious film. Yes. 
<laughs> so you lied to me, sir. <laughs> um, so, okay, they have an apple farm. Yeah, his mom bakes these huge apple pies while his quote-unquote animal lover father, I guess, is a hunter. Because uh, he calls him a real animal lover. Well, yeah, he's at one with nature. I want to know what the budget was just for sound effects alone. <laughs> Because this is like, we talked about, I mean, a couple weeks ago, we, or I guess a month ago, we talked about 2019, mm-hmm. at, uh, having like some wacky sound effects for the first like five minutes or yep. whatever. This, I think, was also scored by the same morning zoo crew or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much a living cartoon. Oh, yeah. As much as it could be. Because yeah. people survive atomic explosions in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And just have like ash on their face. I think that the I watch like I watched this and uh, Cheyenne watched it with me. Uh, one of her notes is, "Wow, his hair is poofy. That's funny." <laughs> and also the uh, what was the other thing that she really liked about it? Oh, uh, she thought the accents were cute. The accents, <laughs> yeah. Where, where's Jazz when we need her? Right? She is from New Zealand. Let's well, not get into that. I know it's not the same. <laughs> we know you're from New Zealand, Jazz. Just, just calm just down. Calm it's okay. Down. We we know. We know. It's, there's I, there's a huge difference. You guys are at war, the Great Civil War of 2014. We know all about it. Hey, you know what? It's it'd just be like calling it, uh, a Canadian American. Yeah. So, I did also like some of the fun nods to like other scientists in this movie, <laughs> like the the Newton thing with the apple falling on his head. Well, that's what I was a little confused at first because I was like, "Wait, I thought he was playing I, I thought he was playing Albert Einstein." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then he also, yeah, he has like the Isaac Newton moment of like an apple falling on his head. I was like, "Wait, hold the phone. Is he just gonna do every <laughs> every scientist's like life story into one?" <laughs> but then they kind of they kind of like uh, abandoned that early in the movie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so he's got he's on his apple farm, and. Uh, there's, we, of course, we see the Tasmanian devil, uh, he lands on, like, a seesaw, and a barrel of apples fall on his head, and he's like, every action has an opposite reaction. Yep. Well, that's, that part where he comes up with this, well, his formulation that the opposite equal reaction, law of motions, essentially. So, to, I guess, prove it, or to, (laughs) I guess, show that... He was right. Rather than just, you know, do that again with a seesaw, but not get a crate of apples to the head, what does he do? He builds a catapult. Builds a fucking catapult. And I'm guessing this is like a week later, because there's no way. He like looks at a tree, and then the next scene is he has this very, like, well-constructed catapult. Mm -hmm. Built with all these pulleys and ropes. Yeah, yeah. That he built himself, but I think the movie tries to tell us in the span of, like, an hour. (laughs) But he gets in, and he falls through the roof of his house. Yep. So then he just repairs it. (laughs) (laughs) He has to have a conversation with his dad to say he doesn't want to be an apple farmer. (laughs) He's a pacifist. He's a pacifist, and he wants to be a physicist. And they have this conversation, so he's talking with his pops on, like, this cliff, right? Yep. And it's almost like this Lion King-esque, like, all this will be yours. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Or whatever. But uh, to me, what was crazy about it is that I, that whole scene is, like, one shot from, like, a long distance away. Mm-hmm. And completely ADR. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, I wonder like how many different things they went through for the scene. Because you could tell, like, their mouths are not even moving. No. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a few scenes like that. Like, there's a later scene with uh, Marie Curie. Yes, Marie Curie is in this movie. And, like, another scene later with them, and it's the same thing. Like, they don't... There's a long conversation where you don't see them talking at all. Oh, there's another part where they just ADR her line into something else. And you can see her mouth move, and those are not the words that are coming out of her mouth. <laughs> what we're trying to say is there was some post-production work done here, right. folks. <laughs> So, so yeah, they're they're uh, they have their their conversation. He says, "I want to pacifist. I want to be uh, uh, a, f- what do you say, physicist." A physicist. Yeah. His dad asks, "Physicist? What do they grow?" <laughs> yeah. So he gets in his 
Albert gets in his wash tub, which he also uses to clean the dishes. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I think Cheyenne's actual word, that's not sanitary. That's exactly what I wrote. <laughs> I said, well, not exactly. I put washing dishes in your bath water. Gross. <laughs> but, he, you know, he heads to bed. He says goodnight to his parents. I believe the sheep talks. Yeah, that does happen. But before that, he's in the bath. As he's in the bath washing dishes as well, he's also playing his violin. Yeah. And he's playing... Did you notice he was playing the bars to satisfaction? Is that what it was? Okay, I was yeah. trying to, like... I was trying to pull, uh, put my finger on it. I couldn't quite... Yeah. Yeah, and they're just like, Oh, what is that nonsense or whatever? Yeah. Is, and he he does... He says good... As he's saying good idea. His mom is knitting from the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> also, can we just say right now... Uh, his mom is super horny. Yes. And <laughs> oh. possibly Rebel Wilson's mom. <laughs> It's like, there's like a scene where you just, like, off camera, you hear the dad go, not tonight, I've got a headache. Oh. And then there's one later on where he says, like, you in for some light entertainment? And she's like, oh, so early in the day? I was talking about the wireless. <laughs> yep. Like, that mom wants to fuck. Yep. Good for her, though, I say. Good for her. <laughs> yeah. Where was that scene in the movie? <laughs> I gotta get the Blu-ray. <laughs> Emphasis on blue. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Nailed it. Yep. Cha-ching. Count it. Take out your... <laughs> take out your withdrawal from the comedy ATM. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, again, uh, people are probably like, wow, they said that really quick. But yes, there's a talking sheep. He says, good night, Albert. Good night, Albert. <laughs> with, with the mouth not moving at all. <laughs> and I think, I think it was like... A thing that was recorded later because no one reacts to it in any kind of way. Like, not even, like, very, very, like, quick reaction. Do you know what I mean? Well, when you're used to it, obviously that sheep always talks and wishes him goodnight. Yeah, it, it, but it just looked like it wasn't a thought at the time. Like, it looked like it was added in later to, like, as a joke. As, as a true auteur... <laughs> like Yahoo series is, the genius comes to him even after the production is wrapped. <laughs> Oh god, an idea we could put that in there. That'd be funny. And then he headbutts his mom's boobs and goes to bed. <laughs> Cause that's how he hugs her. I was like, why is he headbutting her boobs? Oh man, I love this movie so much. The next day, Pops takes Albert to a uh, shack where they make beer. Now, in honor of this, and yeah. I know Stephen is, you will appreciate this. Oh, there you go. Goose Island IPA with bubbles. So let I'm going to raise my glass and a toast to the great Australian scientist, Albert Einstein, who without <laughs> his the, contribution, the great Australian there would scientist. be no bubbles in this beer. <laughs> and I raise my large black coffee in uh, <laughs> respect as well. Thank you. <laughs> I have a note that at one point he was singing Hava Nagila. Yeah, and you know what? I actually, I don't know why I decided to do this, but I was curious and I looked up to see when Hava Nagila was written. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you know, this is the only anachronism in this movie, <laughs> but it was written 10 years after this movie takes place. I'm sorry, Nathan. I found a flaw. <laughs> see, I thought Hava Nagila was just like a, an old traditional Jewish tune. Yeah, but apparently it was only conceived in 1915. Really? Hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting tidbit. That's a tidbit that's interesting. <laughs> Thank you, internet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah he so gets smashed with his dad. They get smashed. Yeah. Yeah, but but the but this is an important thing is that his dad is like, we don't know, we don't have bubbles for the beer, <laughs> so we get drunk, but it's like flat beer. Yeah. Well, I'm like, well, wait, you just said you get drunk. I don't see the issue. No, yeah, there's still none. <laughs> But this is uh, Albert comes up with the idea that the the only way to get bubbles into the beer is atomic energy. Yep, split the atom. Splitting the atom. But that works out well, right? Absolutely. Well, for us, because I'm having a beer with bubbles in it right now. Well, I just wrote, "Well, he's dead." The end, I guess. <laughs> he splits on a Tasmanian beer atom with a chisel. 
<laughs> yep. My favorite part about this is it's one of those uh, comedy tropes, like where you hear the description of everything that's going on, but you don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the shack just explodes. Oh, it's it's an atomic explosion. <laughs> He's dead. And he is fine. <laughs> like, no, no, no bumps or bruises or cuts or, or huge open gaping wounds. Nope, he's just covered head to toe in soot. Yep. <laughs> that, that, that's what happens, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, I'll ask, we can... You know what? We should save up, fly to Hiroshima, and ask people if that's how things happen. Oh, oh my god. What, too soon? <laughs> so what happened is you, all the kids were just covered in soot, right? Yep. Get out of our country no, nobody's right now. Nobody's skin was melted. <laughs> Get out of our country. <laughs> You're not welcome here. Right. <laughs> well, so much for what were they thinking goes to Japan. <laughs> Man, I was going to cover all those camera films and everything. I know, all those screenings, too. <laughs> right. So, anywho, um, I like how bubbles and beer weren't invented yet, but he still, the dad is still like, it's got a good head on it. Yeah, he knows <laughs> the terminology. Right. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> You can't, you can't just be like, you can't just like not have invented a car and then have the first car and be like, oh, is it automatic or manual? Right. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. oh, so you put in half passenger side airbags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes no sense. But it happens. Uh, right. His mother is holding a kangaroo that I think is dead. No, it's a, it's a joey. It's like a baby. So she's like cradling it, rocking it to sleep. Oh, it looks like it, it looked like it wasn't even breathing. <laughs> Well, she's sad because Albert is uh, going to take his new theory, the E equals MC squared, or EMCA. Yep, as everyone else says in this movie. <laughs> he's going to go He's gonna go to the mainland. And, and uh, we're, okay, I got to say, too, because there was a song written the same year those movies came out, right? Because I looked it up. Mm -hmm. I was shocked that... During the scene where he's walking to the mainland, he goes through all these, like, different uh, environments and, like, climates, right? Yeah. They didn't play I Would Walk 500 Miles? Those... N no. That came out the, that came out in 88. The, they were Scottish. No, that's an Australian band. The Proclaimers? I'm pretty sure. I'm looking that up. I'm looking it up, too. Oh, you're right. My bad. That be the man who walked a thousand. I'm going to get my accents all mixed up here if I don't knock it off. No, no, you're right. You're right. I just saw it. They're Scottish. Okay. But my th okay, but even so, it just looked like the perfect song for that montage, though. Yeah, I too. can't believe they didn't use Land Down Under. That, it, that, that, uh, what was that written? Let's check that was way before this. Okay. I believe you. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not going to look it up. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel it would have been a little on the nose. Yeah. It just, like, I don't know, the 500 Miles song, uh, yes, I know it's, now I know it's a Scottish duo, but it still felt like it would have really fit. But I... It's very 80s, right? That, yeah. Well, so. it, it gets more recognized as a 90s tune because it was in, it's true. was it Benny and June? Oh, oh, was it in... I don't even remember. I remember liking that movie, but nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's in the soundtrack on that, I believe. But, um... If you want to see Johnny Depp as Buster Keaton, watch Betty and June. Yes. I that All that aside, I will say I found myself really liking the soundtrack in this movie. I was surprised by the soundtrack, though, because, like, okay, maybe it's just because... I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm not as cultured. But there were a lot of rock songs I didn't re even recognize. Well, did I mean, the Australian Stein invented rock and roll. Didn't you know that? <laughs> In 1905. And called it rock and roll. Right. <laughs> I thought he called it roll and rock. No, because he's got to hear that rock and roll music. Oh, we'll get to that, <laughs> man. We'll get to that. Well, so he goes through all that. I mean, like, he's going through, like, a uh, winter tundra. He's going through by sea across the desert, climbs a cliff, inexplicably, yeah, he inexplicably joins an indigenous tribe. <laughs> that was the most random. I was like, what? And then he arrives at the train station alongside a skeleton. 
And unfortunately, I felt bad, but I had to explain that joke to my daughter. About? About the guy with the train schedule waiting and waiting and waiting so long that he was waiting and he died and (laughs) passed away while waiting for the train. (laughs) A tragic end for that character. Yes. But we uh, quickly meet the villain of the film. And we know he's the villain because he has the same first name as his last name. (laughs) Preston Preston of the Perth Prestons. And then I had to pause the movie and rewind a couple times because he's sitting there with a woman. And he called her Marie... Well, no, actually, actually, everybody calls her Mary, but it's Marie. Yes. Uh, But it's Marie Curie. And I paused it, rewind, and I was like, wait, hold on a second. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I don't think these timelines match up. <laughs> no. I was like, wait, no, 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 hold on. I must have heard that wrong. I... Rewind it a couple times. No, it's this. It's Marie Curie. <laughs> yeah, and here's, I guess, one of the big things for me with this is that he is supposed to be, uh, he, it works in a, a patent, he runs a patent office. Yes. Right, so he's familiar with science. Mm-hmm. And... If she's introduced herself as Marie Curie, wouldn't he know that Marie Curie won the Nobel Prize? You would think so. Well, and he just, he mansplains everything to her. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he is a, he's a perfect example of, like, the worst kind of man. <laughs> do, he, do you know how, do you know how the sound travels? It's a, up, up the needle, in the little, the little grooves, up the needle... To to the, the 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 speaker that amplifies the sound. She's like, hmm, yeah. <laughs> Let me mansplain a gramophone to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, as he's trying to like you know secure it, uh, the train stops, <laughs> and I guess uh, Albert Einstein comes on board with even more ridiculous hair. Yep, and has a little <laughs> lizard pal <laughs> with him. That lizard, yep. Which Preston reacts to strongly. <laughs> He's scared shitless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, Albert and Marie discuss basically scientific theories back and forth. <laughs> Did you catch the part where he scratches himself with the lizard? How could I miss it? They made us a, a super loud sound effect. <laughs> also, motherfucking Preston Preston makes like low haiku sounds when he kisses her hand. <laughs> Gross. I told you this movie is the best thing. Gross mouth sounds. <laughs> Not my fave. <laughs> but Albert, you know, after they have their little meat cute, which by the way, I will say right now, I had a really hard time with Chairman of the Board for many reasons, obviously. But mm. the main one was that I was like, no one would ever fall for this fucking idiot. In yeah. this one, he's got a lot more charm. It's a naivete that's sweet, right? Yeah, he's more of like a sweet... Like, I know you mentioned even in the, in that episode about uh, Ernest. Ernest, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Ernest is like a sexual being, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he is, and Ernest goes to jail. Just when he's evil. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I could see someone being nicer to him, or like, uh, yeah, who's serious as character, rather than, like, fucking Carrot Top, who looks like a mutant. Well... I don't know so much that he looks like a mutant, but he acts in a really obnoxious oh. way, yeah. He, look, okay, he looks and acts like a mutant. How about that? Okay, there, well, there you go. <laughs> but Albert goes to the patent office, but you find out he can't patent a formula. Yeah, and I have a note. Uh, there was a guy standing in line with him <laughs> yeah. at the patent office, and it looked like it was Johnny Depp. <laughs> I, I had to stop for a second, and I was like, it could be maybe they were filming nightmare right next door and he accidentally stumbled onto the wrong set (laughs) maybe he just heard of this you know uh uh this young upstart australian filmmaker who's gonna be huge (laughs) and he was like this will help my career he was in character too (laughs) right because he's super method i want (laughs) to just makes me think of a world where like all these movies you never knew actually had secret johnny depp cameos (laughs) (laughs) In Schindler's List, he's actually one of the Nazis in the background. <laughs> Just shifty-eyed looking around. <laughs> Do you think Steven will recognize me? <laughs> I've never worked with him on a film before, so... 
Uh, so he's dejected because he can't patent his head. Yeah. Um, as much as he would like to. As much as he'd like to. So he, he has to go take up residence in a Skid Row hotel uh, populated by prostitutes. I was going to say, I thought it was like just a whorehouse that he was like, can I have a room? And they're like, I guess so. Yeah, we got the biggest bed in Australia. Yep, on Lonely Street. <laughs> Literally Lonely Street. It's, yeah, Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so- There's a really, I mean, all the exchanges that happen at the hotel are the oddest fucking exchanges. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know what to make of most of that. <laughs> you know what? Uh, after he blew up the shack and lived to tell about it, I tried to make n- not to make sense of anything at all and just sat back and enjoyed it as the living cartoon that it is. <laughs> well, I want to like keep in mind the shack explosion thing because when we get to the end, I want to bring that up uh, in relation to something else. Okay, but yeah, they, I I just wrote down like I guess uh, I guess hot women are just attracted to dudes with freaky red hair. Like I guess that's just a thing. <laughs> So he he gets a room. It's a beautiful room with in great great condition, with grass <laughs> in the bathroom. All kinds of roaches. Yeah, exactly what oh. you want. Yep. Um, I will say props to whoever did the production design on this movie, wh- which I'm assuming was done by Yahoo Serious, <laughs> <laughs> because he did everything else. So oh, you sure it wasn't Ask Jeeves Serious, his brother. <laughs> I thought it was uh I thought it was Google silly. No, no, it was his cousin Alta Vista serious. <laughs> so it wasn't it, it wasn't uh Bing foolish. No, no, and not also not to be confused uh with his other cousin uh web crawler Ernest. <laughs> now I just want to see an Ernest movie where he plays a spider. <laughs> know what I mean, Bird? Ah! I get that search for you, Vern. You're looking for the WWE? I got it. <laughs> we got a wrestling reference in too. Oh, and Ernest is a spider. You're welcome for that visual. Man, this is working out great. <laughs> oh, so many keyword searches I gotta bring up this episode. <laughs> So, after he goes to sleep... Anyway, he's in the whorehouse. So then we go back to Preston Preston. Mm -hmm. And he is just... He is having an orgasm to opera. I know. He is, like, really into that opera music. Yes. And Marie Curie is like, Ah, yes, no, it's it's very nice. Um, I'm glad you like it. Like... (laughs) (laughs) But she she suggests to Preston that his Einstein's formula is actually a brilliant, and he believes her obviously more than he does Albert because he thinks he's just some crazy bushman, right? Well, there's that. Yeah, he's a he's very much a, a classist asshole. So like, if anybody is kind of rough around the edges, well, they clearly don't know what they're talking about because they're uncultured and unrefined. Yeah. So Preston tells uh, the guy at the patent office, he's like. When he comes in to give you the formula, just tell him you're going to hang on to it for safekeeping. Yeah. Which, you know, that's a good idea to just let someone do that. So he does, and Preston steals it and gives it to the Bavarian Brothers Beer Company. Who, yes, this is what we mentioned, one of them is a little person. Yes. Yep. And uh, one of, the other guy I wrote down looks like German Horatio Sands. <laughs> yes, because if... To really drive home uh, the, the hilariousness, uh, throw some air quotes there, of a little person, they have to be standing next to a person who is considerably larger than the average person. Oh! So you're getting the extremes, right? That's why it's funny. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's the best part about this, is that they have little people, and like, there's not really a joke. They're just kind of like, hey, look, it's a little person. Yeah. And this is where we do find out that um, uh, a, a white Australian invented rock and roll. Yeah, right. <laughs> he amplifies the sound. Uh, and he and, got the idea from, like, a game of Foursquare? Yeah. he also Yeah, because not only did he invent rock and roll and the theory of relativity, but he also invented Dance Dance Resolution. Or Dance Dance Revolution, rather. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, he invents rock and roll. He turns his violin into an electric violin, and then proceeds to die of electrocution. Yep, that's the second time he's died. <laughs> I, I don't mean to steal from another podcast too much, but when do you think this movie turned into Jacob's Ladder? <laughs> <laughs> after I would say, you know, after the uh, explosion, obviously. Possibly even when he got hit with the barrel of apples. Very possible. Because that was from a long distance. Yeah. <laughs> um, he also turns turns down... Well, he doesn't really turn it down, but one of the prostitutes is like, I'm going to bed. And there's a long pause. He just goes, all right, good night. Good night, then. <laughs> I did... Yeah. Actually, when he did the... Uh, uh, when he amplified the music and invented rock and roll... Um, yes. You, you say it so casually. All these it. people who are hearing it. At one point, there, there's a couple of dudes sleeping together at the hotel. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, that's pretty progressive, actually. I'm surprised there wasn't like a like a not, uh, not aged well gay, gay joke. Yeah, it was just it, it. They made nothing of it. It was just two dudes sleeping together in a bed. Huh. Yep. Also, not an American movie. I feel like an American movie would be like, they'd be super flamboyant or yes. something. Yes, and that wasn't the case. It was just two dudes. And um, well, when he gets electrocuted, he, rather than being covered head to toe in soot, he's, for some reason, covered head to toe in powder. Yeah, <laughs> like, he just, like he just went to like a party held by like John Belushi or something. Well, I was going to say, and now he's Annie Lennox. <laughs> Somebody went to school on a sheep scholarship what <laughs> well, missed that one well no because uh albert gets up the next day to go visit uh marie curie at the at the university and when he gets to the security gate uh somebody's coming in and they're like oh were you here for i don't know life sciences or whatever he's like nope sheep scholarship and he's got sheep <laughs> with him also apparently you have to pay cover Yes, five dollars for sciences and no musical <laughs> instruments on campus. I did. I didn't understand that. Although a gajillion sheep and kangaroo are perfectly fine. Yep. I didn't really get that part. I was like, hold on. Like he's paying cover to go visit someone. Yeah, an admission fee just to get on campus. Oh, uh, maybe it's also, is that an Australian thing? Get at us. <laughs> But yeah, he does go to the university, and he goes into like where Marie's professor is, I guess, and erases like the entire board. Yep. He's he got like E equals, and then a bunch of equations. Yeah, uh, and he er erases it all and just writes MC squared, and of course gets kicked out on his ass. I don't understand why, because I feel that that <laughs> this whole section could have led into another movie called G'day Will Hunting. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> who who solved this equation on the board? <laughs> It's, it's it's Will Hunting. G'day. You mean that lonely janitor? <laughs> I'm going to sponsor him, I will. Crikey. <laughs> Shrimp on the barbie. Just driving away our Australian listeners. <laughs> but, but one thing I wanted to point out is when he got kicked on his ass, like, out of the room, did you notice the, the two extras that were, like, kissing, but, like, frozen? No. Oh, yeah, there's two extras, like, right behind him, and they're, like, they're they're supposed to be, like, kissing, I guess they're saying goodbye, but they looked like they were on pause. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, they were not moving. <laughs> I, you know what, it, I like that he got, I, I, the, because he was, uh, Tasmanian, uh, yeah. the whole thing with the G'day Will hunting, it really would have <laughs> drove home the, how do you like them apples, uh, line. Oh my god! <laughs> and the reason, so okay, good. and just because all because the apples, uh, they're it's a running gag throughout the the movie because apparently Tasmania is like one of the major producers of apples down there. Uh, Albert gets dressed up in a tuxedo, pimp in, and and uh, he go, he's gonna go on a date with Marie, but first he must dance with Harry Krishna's. <laughs> I have a note here. Wow, this, he also invented the safety dance. <laughs> they were Harry Krishnas, right? Uh, I they That's were either they Harry like Krishnas me. or just you know uh, Hindu reveling folk. Okay, because I was like, I didn't know Harry Krishnas were like a thing in 1905, but maybe. Oh, they could just been Hindus. 
That's true. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Harry Krishna the, the Krishnas have been around for quite some time. I mean, there were definitely some white people, but I did notice also like one Indian woman. So right. <laughs> hey, that's progression for 1988. <laughs> But he's got flowers, he, they go on their date, and this is the thing, this is the scene I mentioned earlier where it was like almost completely all AD artists, they're standing at this like waterfront, mm -hmm. talking about how time is relative. Yes, because you don't see their face, and it's just talk, 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 talk. And the best part is, what about those random three extras? <laughs> I, I'm think I saw this, and I didn't look it up, because, you know what, work and stuff, uh, but... I was like, is this referencing something? Like, it is has this to supposed be. to be like a scene from like a famous painting or something that I'm missing? Because it was framed weird. It was really framed oddly. Very, yeah. It was like it was so strange, and I was like, I feel like he's he's. I mean, he's the writer, director, producer, star, whatever. So you think he has everything very intricately planned, right? So I don't feel like he would let that slip. No. And I it's one of those things that he might have just he might have been too clever for his own good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it could be one of those situations like, "Oh, this is brilliant. I can use this and everyone will get it." And like maybe five people get it. Yeah, that that or maybe it's just like maybe he thinks it's just like a funny thing to have like weird background stuff. I don't That's know. That's true. That's a possibility as well. Because I did kind of laugh, but I didn't really... It was more of a laugh like, what? <laughs> Don't understand what's going on, but okay. But uh, Marie is just head over heels. Well, they're kind of head over heels over each other. And she begs Preston, basically, to get him a job in the patent office. And he makes him a bookkeeper. Yes. Which is a reference to the real Einstein who worked as a patent clerk. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't even think about that. But he chews him out. Well, because they have this whole fucking who's on first exchange. <laughs> kind of. So whatever's <laughs> left goes into the right, okay? So then, then whatever is, is, is not left over goes into the into the left. So right? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, what's left over? I don't get it. And I'm like, uh, it was a good try. Yeah. <laughs> and then Preston is like... Uh, having dinner with Marie and says, "Oh, he's a he's a terrible worker, but also I love you." He tries to kiss her, and she's like, "No, no." I guys. do like that he says, "I would kiss you if this wasn't such an exclusive club." The look on her face at the just the notion of him possibly kissing her is like, mm, "No, no, 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 no." And then and then no. he grabs her hand and he's like, "Oh." <laughs> Totally gives her the gauss. Um, meanwhile, I do want to uh, issue an apology to Jerrica right now, our guest from the last episode. Okay. Um, Jerrica, I apologize. This movie also had surfing. We could have had you on for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because he invents surfing. Which, and then he, board wax is invented from just like candles, I guess. Well, yeah. Wax from candles, right. yeah. Well, I don't think it's quite the same, but... <laughs> I think he, he was doing it to to prove his theory from earlier that uh, because that light and time travels in waves, if you are traveling on a wave away from something, time would stand still if you were traveling like at the speed of light. Time stands still. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Like the song. Right. Let's not go to the speed of sound. <laughs> was, that, was that Coldplay? Yeah. You're like 25 bucks because there's no way we're paying full price for that cover. Fuck you, Chris Martin. <laughs> Come at me, bro. I'm just talking about your cover of it because you maybe got 25% of the words right. I'm gonna sick your, your, your goop on us? <laughs> He's still with Gwyneth, right? I think so. Okay. I don't know. Fuck. I don't follow that shit. <laughs> I have to, Nathan. <laughs> Otherwise, you die. You're like a, yeah, like a shark, but with celebrity love life. That's right. <laughs> Gotta keep moving, or otherwise I'll die. Oh, there was just a breakup. Pause the podcast. <laughs> but <sighs> uh, yeah, so he surfs, and 
uh, Preston is like starting to notice, you know, Albert and Marie are really starting to fall for each other. So he uh, fires him as his bookkeeper mm -hmm. and says, listen, I'm only saying this because I'm your friend, but you have no ability, talent or potential. <laughs> like, like you I say like to a you. friend. I like you, Albert. That's why I have to tell you you're fucking awful. Yeah, I like you, and that's why you are the worst. <laughs> but this is when Albert uh, goes back to the to the whorehouse, and some and... random kids show up in his room. Yeah, that was weird. I don't think they should probably be around that facility. Well, they <laughs> they show up, and uh, a sudden <laughs> rock concert breaks out, and they have a mosh pit in his room. <laughs> It's right. But he finds out that Preston sold his formula to the Bavarian brothers. And we see the little person again with his large right hand man. <laughs> uh yes. Not a red right hand. It's not Hellboy. No. <laughs> Which apparently is getting trashed by the critics. <laughs> I've We'll just say that I've walked in a few times while working and it does not look good. Oh uh, well. <laughs> I'll be the judge of me. <laughs> oh. All right, well, have fun. <laughs> okay. I probably will, will, will see it when it hits the on-demand services. Yeah, I was going to say, don't. I wouldn't spend ticket I'll, money. I'll theater money for that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so they, uh, they sick the lunatic asylum folks on him, and Albert gets caught by dudes with giant fishing nets. Oh yeah, because he goes to the he goes straight to the Bavarian beer guys. Because he, yeah, he's just trying to explain to them. Uh, they can't use this theory because they're going to blow shit up. And only I can survive atomic bombs. Because, yeah, because he's <laughs> Albert Einstein. That's one of his superpowers. Right. Albert Einstein was this a superhero, is... right? Wait, is this part of the MCU? I think it is. It's It actually predates <laughs> Captain America. Well, we now know who's going to kill Thanos. Yes! Oh, Yes! I never thought Albert Einstein shows up out of nowhere like an RKO, kills Thanos with the theory of relativity. And gives him an RKO. MK. <laughs> can you imagine how many people would be so angry? I can imagine one person who would be very happy. Einstein with the punt! <laughs> That's how he reverses the snap. He does the punt. It's the punt, yeah. It brings everyone back. We are taking a turn right now, I tell you. Oh, what's even funnier is, I'm pretty sure this episode is released after Endgame comes out, so... Oh, you might be right, yeah. Tell us we're right, people. <laughs> anyway, he's in the asylum, he meets Brian Aspirin, <laughs> Ernest Rutherford, and quote-unquote, keenly interested. Nice to yeah. meet you, keenly. I... Laughed so hard at that. I just thought it was funny. I, I I think my favorite thing is him saying, the guy that clearly is supposed to be the guy that invented aspirin. Yes. And then he's like, what's your first name? He's like, Brian. Brian. <laughs> like, <laughs> the most boring first name possible. Uh, <laughs> but there, uh, he goes to the asylum. They get a, and it's a good walk-in circle spot. They're eating uh, chicken and booger soup, well, I think. Organ stew, yep. Yeah, they have a trans, a transsexual or transvestite nurse. I'm not sure which is which. You know. Okay, so that wasn't a guy, right? I'm pretty sure it was. Okay, because it was supposed to be like this big, tough, like a nurse ratchet type. You know. Yeah. Oh my god, would be great if it was just straight up nurse ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> Medication time. Nurse ratchet. What would you have done? It like obviously you've seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Mm. If uh, Jack Nicholson just wandering the halls, he runs into <laughs> young Einstein. <laughs> oh, hi, mate. Oh, it's oh, Kim Casey. <laughs> Casey, why, are you, why are you saying the name of the the man who wrote the book on which this movie is based? <laughs> I'm breaking the fourth wall, mate. <laughs> I'm a serious filmmaker. <laughs> McMurphy, you say you raped a girl and you're the main character? <laughs> Crikey! Oh. <sighs> Anyhow. Oh, the 80s were a crazy time to be alive. <laughs> I, lo they, I love that they have a mad scientist's ward. And this is where the uh, the whole train traveling at the speed of light 
and relativity question comes up. Because light, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. And I don't know if it was Keenly Interested or Brian Asprin. One of them says, that's not true. If I was on a train that was going at the speed of light, and I got up and moved from the back compartment to the front compartment, wouldn't I then be traveling faster than the speed of light? <laughs> and then, isn't one of them also say, like, it's in Newton's book. And Einstein's like, Newton was wrong. Newton was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, uh, Marie Curie finds out that Preston's put him in a asylum. Right. And she confronts him about stealing the formula, because he, he apparently, in the middle of, like, you could tell he took her to another fucking opera. <laughs> <laughs> or it's not even an opera, it's, like, just a live performance for, like, five people. Yes. And so she decides to go to the asylum. Of course, they tell her, no, you can't go in. You're not friends or, or you're not family or relatives or whatever. So she puts on a fake beard and pretends to be his dad. Albert Einstein's father. Yeah. So this presents kind of a weird part in the movie. You mean the part where there's a, a common bathing area and someone drops the soap and they make no joke about it whatsoever? The the, the mm, no joke, but almost a joke in the in itself in that, that they don't they didn't make, a, make joke. a joke about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they drops the soap. I do like the fact that when we see them all in the same bathing area and they're having like a serious discussion, just in the background you can see someone washing his ass, <laughs> <laughs> just scrubbing away I, on his butthole. The best part about that whole thing. Again, <laughs> I watched this movie with Wait, my fourteen that- year old daughter. Pun intended, right? What? The best part the best about that part whole thing? About the whole thing. The yep. H-O-L thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, H-O-L-E uh. thing. Uh, was that... I watched this with my daughter. And she... It's so fun. I don't know where they... They must get this from... Uh, they must learn this at school or on the streets or something. Because they don't get it from me. That's for sure. She gets super embarrassed by the fact that she's watching this happen... While she's watching this with with me, her dad, she's like, oh my god, seriously, dad? <laughs> I'm like, what? He's just washing his butt. <laughs> Everyone washes their butt. I hope you wash your butt. <laughs> it's like that Simpsons bit where he's like, I had sex! <laughs> <sighs> so, Marie Curie does show up in drag, um, and... <laughs> And everyone thinks that Albert is making Albert. out with his dad. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, close family. <laughs> well, father and son reunited at last. <laughs> oh man, imagine if right there they had played reunited and it feels so good. Gross. <laughs> I don't mean just the, to... the idea, but just that song. <laughs> according to all the inmates, <laughs> Albert is. Full on macking with his pops. Yep. But she tells him, like, you know, about the theory, and he's like, yeah, I know, I know. And then when her beard comes off, all the other inmates are like, oh my god, it's a woman! <laughs> he's a woman! That, that is what scares them. <laughs> and then we uh, smash cut. Smash cut. To hashtag kitten pot pie. Oh. Hashtag kitten murder. This was. The most nervous I have ever been. <laughs> What's the matter, Brendan? Don't you think this is hilarious? No. Hashtag cat child murder. Uh. Yeah, it's oh, it's not so funny now, is it? Okay, I wasn't as that bothered by it, because I figured it. Well, they weren't going to show anything. <laughs> you never know. No, what bothered me, I don't mind seeing, like, a fake animal. Like, if there's, like, a fake animal murder, I'm like, I know it's fake. The part that was a little unnerving was when he threw the pie crust on them. Mm-hmm. It looked a little violent. <laughs> like, it looked a little real-world violence. I was so upset. I just... I, I I mean, when they're in the pie, clearly they're not actually in the pie. But when they throw the crust onto a group of kittens, I was like, that eh, looked a little, uh, a little aggressive. I don't know, there was a couple times where they, they showed the pie and the... The, the crust was moving around before they put it into the oven. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he tries to make a kitten pot pie, but thank thank God 
Einstein is the greatest human being that ever lived. <laughs> and he we, saves them. Before we get to him literally saving the cats. Oh, yeah. I wrote down, oh, it's the save the about to be cooked into a pie cat moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marie has a big, I don't know, dramatic speech with Albert. Yes. And this was that part I was telling you about. There is a section where she says, uh, well, what we hear is if you won't do anything, then who will? But if you watch the movie, you'll see she actually said when they did the line, if you won't do anything, I will. I thought that's what she actually said. Well, either way, it, it was switched. Yeah. Because they, they overdubbed it and changed it from one to the other. So they rocked this joint. And uh, use a fire axe to break the glass to get a fire axe. Yeah, that was a, that was a decent great, gig. Great bit. Yeah, I like that. And uh, then, yeah, so they use... Save the cats. <laughs> save the cats. Literally <laughs> save the cats. <laughs> and they use an electric guitar to break all the electric locks. Mm-hmm. And Albert goes back to the whorehouse. Yes. And finds out that uh, Marie has gone back to France. And I, I before we find that all that out... I, I kind of want to touch on all the exchanges that happen at the whorehouse. Every time Albert's there and it feels like they're going to proposition him to pay for sex, they always just have this weird exchange about scientific theory. Yeah. And it was one of my favorite parts of the movie. Just these random exchanges with prostitutes about uh, the mysteries of the universe. But then also, like, there was also one later where she, I think she was going to fuck him. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's it. Like, because she leads it up with, she leads it in with the, uh, talking about the mysteries of the universe. And she's like, well, I'm going to bed. And he's, and like you said, he was like, well, good night. Yeah, basically. So, uh, yeah. So after all that, he finds out she's in France. He goes to, uh. To see her at her parents' house, where apparently she has, like, a super misogynistic father. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> who's just like, women should be in the home, they shouldn't be scientists. He's French, he wouldn't be talking like that. Oh, sorry, I'm so used to the accent. They should be in the home, not in the science world. And like, women should be in the home, not the science world. Uh-huh. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> Great. Now French <laughs> relate us to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, and this is actually this. These coming scenes are when all the scientists show up, right? Because this is when Einstein shows up at the house. Uh, he, the father, calls him a barbarian. He says, "I'm not a barbarian. I'm a Tasmanian." Tasmanian, yeah. <laughs> uh, they take the hot air balloon, <laughs> which I gotta say, for the most part, I'm like. Yeah, it's the 80s, I get it. The effects are not going to be amazing, but there's some decent stuff. But that hot air balloon processing shot... The worst. Holy shit. That was terrible. That was so bad. Like, they were basically in front of a movie screen. Yes. (laughs) In front of, like, a painting. So he's he's trying to get to the... uh, Convention. The Science Oscars. Yeah, the Science Oscars. Hosted by Marconi. Who is, like, a shock jock or something. Yeah. Oh my god, it would have been great if Howard Stern played Marconi. See, yeah, Marconi's there. Edison shows up. He's stealing everything. Uh, the Wright <laughs> brothers, one of them's a black dude. <laughs> hey, like you said, progression. Man. I love this movie so much. I gotta much. say, um, it's funny that like they're really the only like American characters that speak, like the Wright brothers. Yeah. And the moment they speak, they're like, derp, 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 derp. <laughs> Basically. Now, and I guess the culmination of all of this is where Darwin shows up. He's the host. Right. With his beagle. He's the he's the Billy Crystal of this awards show. Yes, but uh, this is, again, one of those situations where I don't feel a whole lot of people would have got this joke. Oh, I didn't get the Beagle thing at all. Well, when Darwin did his uh, explorations, and for lack of a better term, when he was coming up with the theory of evolution, uh, the the traveling that he would do was on a ship called the Beagle. Uh. And I had to explain that to Cheyenne because I knew she would not get it because I'm guessing she probably hasn't 
read any of the history on the theory of evolution, because, you know what, she's in grade eight. <laughs> well, you, you don't know. I don't. But but it's, it goes back to that thing with the at the scene at the wall with the clock and everything. It's like, I feel that it re- it's referencing something that only a few folks would get. I feel like also, like, that joke might have been better if they hadn't had the name tag that just says the beagle. Like, it's clearly a beagle. Like, I, I think that's I think that's maybe an extra detail they don't really need. Well, again, that's because the name of the ship was the beagle. That's Well, that's, yeah, I know. But, I mean, just having a beagle, I think, would have referenced that enough. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, I, it just like um, it's already an obscure joke. Like, just let it be obscure. You know what I mean? I Yeah. I, I did like when Darwin introduced everybody being there and said that Edison was there with his new invention, the electric light. With all of these electric lights around them. <laughs> so Preston arrives on the stage and he's got his formula for beer bubbles, even though it's not his. Yep. But Albert and Marie uh, arrive via the hot air balloon despite a horrible crash. Because he removed the balloon's cork. He tries to tell them, wait, it's an atomic it's an atomic bomb. And Preston is like, you're, you're just jealous. Pulls the lever <laughs> And there we go. The atomic bomb is about to go off. <laughs> if I'm Albert Einstein, I'd be like, you know what? Fuck all y'all. I can survive I can one. survive this. I've already <laughs> survived one. <laughs> yep. He should have just sucked it up all up with his... I know he does with his guitar, but he should have just sucked it all up with his mouth and then digested it. <laughs> he would have been fine. Because he's like Godzilla that way. That's right. <laughs> Blown it into, like, fucking Mothra's mouth or some shit. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, there's a lot of panic here. But Albert is, he has an idea, folks. Atomic rock. Atomic rock. He gets his, uh, I I mean, it's an electric violin, isn't it? Well, that's it. Like, it's cobbled together. It, yeah. it started out as a violin, but he just Basically kept adding guitar, pieces to it. So it's essentially uh, a musical Rube Goldberg device. <laughs> yeah. So he uses it to suck up all the atomic energy, mm-hmm. but at the same time, Preston is like, now's my chance to assassinate him, because yes. he's gone from kind of an evil dude to a fucking killer. Yep. He's got a little handgun with a targeting system on it, <laughs> and Marie knocks him out with the award, to which, I gotta say, when he's getting knocked out, that is like Concussion City. Yeah, I actually, he got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, his eyes were like... I was like, that that didn't look healthy. <laughs> and it's at this point where the, it's all right, Mary, they're only electrons. <laughs> right. And he's like red and glowing. I actually have a note. Uh, apparently, Albert Einstein was a founding member of Mudvayne as well. <laughs> because he's got the big fucking porcupine spikes and he is red as like James Mitchell. But he uh, survives it all. Sucks up the atomic energy. He is completely covered in ash mm-hmm. once again and makes out with uh, Marie. Yep. Gets her covered in ash a little bit. And you know what I got to say? Kudos to this movie. I wasn't super grossed out when they kissed. Because, again, he's a sweet, naive guy who only wants the betterment of the world. And uh, same goes for her. Well, and I think also it wasn't that weird thing that Carrot Top just kind of pushed his face into the girl. <laughs> yeah. They actually did, like, kiss. Yeah. It was an like, actual tender people. moment. <laughs> yeah. So he saves the day, and uh, Albert, Marie, and a bunch of revelers, I guess. He has a world hero parade, yeah. Yeah, they go back to Tasmania to Mom and Pops. The, f- the first bubbled beer. First bubbled beer. And he reveals that he's donated his theory... E equals MC squared to the governments of the world because if you can't trust the governments of the world, who can you trust? <laughs> Get off your soapbox, Yahoo Serious. <laughs> I did like that there were some uh, Tasmanian skanks who were like science groupies. I want Albert to give me a science lesson. I knew him first. Tasmanian skank is my new punk band. I would I would buy that album. <laughs> Sweet. I got... I sold one! <laughs> you know, if it's a punk rock band, sometimes it's all you need. <laughs> that means or one rather, meal for me. <laughs> sometimes that's all you get. 
Yeah, that's true. I thought you said punk bands are super rich and famous. <laughs> yeah, every single one of them. Yeah, I mean, the Sex Pistols weren't the only rich ones, right? <laughs> well, they, none of them, nobody sold out as hard as they did, but... <laughs> or or crashed and burned. Fuck those guys. Uh, uh, not a Sid Vicious we, fan? I, no, I fucking hate the Sex Pistols. Uh, I mean, I will grant you this, uh, Nathan. Sid Vicious, uh, an okay singer, a better person. <laughs> if Sid and Nancy taught me anything... <laughs> Um, so this, again, uh, Einstein, uh, shows his off his new invention, rock and roll. Yep. Yeah, he invents crowd surfing. Yep. <laughs> and we end on a, a legitimate quote from Einstein, who the movie was dedicated to. <laughs> weird. That was a weird moment. <laughs> oh, love this movie. I gotta say, too, we end with the an entire Chuck Berry song. Yeah. Like, the whole thing. Yep. As if this was, the, as if the whole movie was a musical. <laughs> um, completely sung by Yahoo Sirius himself. Definitely not ADR. Nope, not at all. Not Chuck Berry's voice. Nope. <laughs> Which, I gotta say, is pretty funny to watch a dude with, a, a super white Australian dude with red hair singing a song by a black singer. (laughs) (laughs) The voice doesn't quite match, but I think that's (laughs) part of it. Not quite, no. Yeah, I think he might have known that when he did the movie. Uh, But, uh, yeah, I I, I like that it ended with the song. Don't know if I needed the whole thing, but... (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) I guess that's Young Einstein. That's it, yeah. So, uh... So now we're going to start watching, talking about Reckless Kelly, and then Mr. Accident. (laughs) Good lord. Also, I gotta say right now, it was... I don't think it was a conscious decision that we themed this month. No, no, it just... But... It, well, it was... Kind of. Kind of. Because you, when you told me we were doing chairman of the B-O-R-E-D, you said (laughs) his name was Edison... And I was like, oh my god, then we have to do Young Einstein. (laughs) Um, Back the curtain, folks. Breaking that fourth wall. (laughs) Backstage, behind the scenes. Crikey! (laughs) Shrimp on the barbie. (laughs) No more Australian listeners. (laughs) Take a shot. (laughs) Oh boy. So, I mean, I don't have to ask. Obviously, this is a crazy fucking movie. So much fun, though. So much fun. Just, uh, just, just watch it. It's, it's... But kids, don't base any of your, uh, history, science projects on this movie. <laughs> don't put, don't put Young Einstein in your footnotes. No. <laughs> but Yahoo Serious said this. <laughs> F. <laughs> F minus. <laughs> I saw a whole movie and everything about it. But that is, that is that movie, so we are going to take a brief commercial break, and we will be back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK. For 25% off your first purchase, that's Schluck, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Are you Yahoo serious? (laughs) No, I'm Nathan Spavald. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) But you just told me about an app... That will pay me to listen to podcasts. Yes. Podcoin. Yep. This is a thing. It is a thing. I listen to podcasts. I get podcoins that I can use to spend on gift cards or donate to charity. Yes, you're repeating exactly the same points that I made that that we weren't recording. What? Uh, as, As I said before, when we weren't recording and you just repeated, if you get the podcoin app. Yeah. Um... Uh, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, put it on your Android or your iOS device, listen to 
podcasts. Any podcast. Any podcast. They got them all. Uh, oh. You get pod coins, which you can use for uh, Amazon gift cards or other gift cards. Or if you're feeling particularly philanthropic, you can donate that money to charity. My favorite actor, philanthropic. Yes. I think he won the science Oscars. <laughs> I think so, too. Mm-hmm. But, okay, so all that being said, like, but if people that are listening right now, mm-hmm. like, if you listen to What Were They Thinking, which obviously everyone in the world does, yes. every, everyone listens to it, um, is there a benefit? Like, do they, if they sign up for PodCoin, having listened to this show, mm-hmm. how does that help them out? Well, I'll tell you how it helps them out, because we are the authority on mm terrible to questionable movies Definitely. it only makes sense that if you enter the code WWTTPD the Woo! what were they thinking police department because we again are the authority on good to questionable movies or bad to questionable movies Mr. Bowl you're under arrest you will receive 300 bonus pod coins just put in that code if you've already got PodCoin, put in that code anyways. Because it's going to help you. Going to get your Amazon car- gift cards, or you're going to donate to charity. Sounds good to me. Well, then what are you waiting for? Get on it. Download PodCoin today, folks. You'll be happy you did. PodCoin. What were they And we are, wait for it, wait for it, the mystery continues, wait for it, we're back. I thought we were front. Oh, oh, uh, this is awkward. It is. Um. I'll turn around, just a second. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, we're back. Oh, all right, we're back to back, recording as we always do. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only way I can, uh, I can do it. I'm sorry, Nathan, for my weird, the weird rider in my contract, but that's how I gotta, I gotta it's do it. It's fine, you know, some people have nervous bladders, you have a nervous microphone. <laughs> that's right. Surprised you didn't make a dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, what's happening to my voice? Uh, 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 Nathan? Uh, yes, Brendan? I think we're stuck in NPR. We are. Uh, this is the low haiku section of what were they thinking? Do do do. Now that's not the theme song. <laughs> we need a theme song for this section. You know, when I pick a haiku, <laughs> that's when I'm under pressure now. Pressure's always got you thinking. What were they thinking now? Ooh. Oh, wait. Haiku. <laughs> there, we did it. Yeah, we did it. Excellent. We managed to get that cover, the <laughs> the NPR cover of our theme song. I believe if that was the case, it would just be spoken word. Possibly. Possibly. And with a lot of mouth noises. Like Preston, Preston. Right. Kissing the hand of one Mary Curie. Yes, Mary. Mary Curie. (laughs) So, okay. This thing is crazy. Anachronisms aplenty. Fucking Australia. Thank you. You're welcome. Albert, oh Albert, film was 100 spot on. Can you be serious? Bravo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Which of course translates in English to good job. Right. Oh, good day. We are back, mate, and we're just getting ready to talk some more about this here fantastic film. It's Brandon and Nathan. Right here on. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Vegemite. Crikey. Shrimp on the barbie. Crocodile Dundee. (laughs) That's not a knife. This is a spoon. 
<laughs> oh, I see you played Knifey Spoonie before. <laughs> No, no, listeners, and we're gonna get so many angry people from Australia. No shame, no shame. <laughs> oh, well, Nathan, we talked about this movie a lot. We did. Well, yes, it belongs on this show, one thousand million percent. Mm-hmm. But what do we always say? Well, we always say. Don't take a word for it. Well, that's right, Nathan. We say, don't take a word for it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I felt oh, like doing that again. Go back to the song, I see. All uh, right, I am. Well, the critics gave this movie a 36%. Struth? Oh, I only see 50 for the audience. Split down the middle, by golly. My gosh. Okay, All right, yeah, I'm going back. Stop doing that. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go back to my real voice. <laughs> Uh, Well, I want to read the first one here for you, Nathan. This is from Desmond Ryan of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Watch out, celebrities in Philadelphia. The Inquirer's coming after you. (laughs) That's not that. That's the whole name of the the magazine. (laughs) Right. Uh, The movie runs out of, excuse me again, energy in the late going, and the invention of the humor is uneven, but Sirius plays the title role with charm and lightness. His wild red hair made makes Don King's looks like a, look like a crew cut. So he's not, like, super positive, but he's also saying, like, it's got a charm to it. Yes. So um, I feel like that's fair. Uh, Jay Boyer from the Orlando Sentinel says, mm. Considering the pre-opening buildup this film has had... It could turn out to be a bigger bomb than the one Einstein's theory anticipated. (laughs) And the unfortunate thing is he was kind of right. That's too bad. Uh, Did not translate as well in 1988 America. (laughs) Also, maybe maybe don't spend $8 million on the marketing. (laughs) Uh, Jonathan Rosenbaum of the Chicago Reader says, It has the charm and advantage of a genuine visual style of its own both laconic and witty, as well as a likably dopey plot and a cast of characters. Hmm. I mean, I I should say, dopey plot and cast of characters. That makes more sense. And I'm going to have to call out Variety on this one, because they didn't have the balls to put who wrote this thing. It's just a Variety staff. I thought that was his name. Variety staff? (laughs) Yeah. You got some fucking mean parents, then, if that's the case. (laughs) What's your name, sir? Staff. Variety, variety staff. staff. Well, you're hired here at Variety. We got a job with your name written all over it. <laughs> Joke's on you. My parents own this brag. <laughs> uh, Sirius, as in Yahoo Sirius, a yes. long-haired gangly clown exhibits a brash and confident sense of humor, endearing personality, and a fondness for sight gags. I mean, it's not f- that's that's fair. Yeah. Is it a positive review? It is a positive review. Oh, okay. This is a negative one, Nathan. Okay. It's from Gary Thompson of Philadelphia News, the rival of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Celebrities, don't worry. We're not going after your social lives. We just report the news here at Philadelphia News. He says, Young Einstein is good-natured and harmless, but it's not very funny. I beg to differ. Again, though, a fair review. Because at least he says it's good-natured and harmless. Like, he's not like, It is the bane of my existence! (laughs) Uh, Ian Nathan from Empire Magazine wrote, A rather lame, awkward, and amateurish movie, only fitfully funny, and made in such a remorseless, lowbrow way that it makes Crocodile Dundee look like Citizen Kane. (laughs) Two out of five. What an asshole. (laughs) Crocodile Dundee, I never want to hear that. Name with Citizen Kane as sentence ever again. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Paul Hogan. Wow, oh, fucking hot take. Sorry. What do you think of Lightning Jack? The the, cro- the first one's fine, but other than that, go fuck yourself, Paul Hogan. That second one is overly long for no reason whatsoever. Oh, you you weren't a fan of uh, also Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles? I did not see that, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on who you are. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the uh, the abyss of Rotten Tomatoes here. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of a just sounds like a uh, a negative re- like a normal negative review until the last kind of line here kind of threw me. 
It's half a star. Okay. Beyond a level of intolerance that even I can't describe, and I've lived it. What? What? <laughs> I've lived it? Does, is this a review from, like, Einstein? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I've. This was a terrible movie, and I should know. The movie's based on my life. <laughs> um, just a quick one here, too, because this is a... This is kind of a... Okay, anyway. Absolute shit. Stating that Marie, Maria Sklodowska Curie was French, born in Warsaw, Poland, French my ass, making fun out of brilliant scientific minds. Hope this movie burns in hell. Wow. Jesus. He, he does not like you messing with history. Uh, or apparently has no sense of humor whatsoever. Warsaw, Poland, my friend. Well, uh... Michael B, and I think... Jordan? The, nah, well, no, I was going to say, because I think the B stands for bitch-ass motherfucker. Okay, that's... Why isn't he, why isn't he Michael Bamf? Well, it's because it's it's all one word. Oh, okay. I I think it's, it's possibly a, a Ukrainian name. I'm not sure. Uh, but he writes, Instantly became the worst movie I'd ever seen, and still is. Absolutely awful script acting, and totally unfunny. I use this film as a barometer to compare other awful movies with. I have never seen a worse movie than this rubbish. Glad this Yahoo's career... Uh, sorry, glad this Yahoo's career died after this dog's breakfast. People that have given it one star or more are people that I never want to meet. I hope <laughs> it burns when you urinate, Michael B., you bitch-ass motherfucker. Joyless Husk. That's the only way I can describe him. I love... I think... Wait, I think he meant to post that on the uh, Postal Rotten Tomatoes page. Possibly. <laughs> this is this is a negative one, but this kind of made me laugh. Uh, one star. I thought this was comic genius when I was six, and that Yahoo Sirius was a transformative figure for the 80s. This is all the proof needed that six-year-olds are idiots. <laughs> Uh, Rod uh, E didn't uh, give it a very favorable review either. He's one star. Mm -hmm. Another one that I liked as a kid and even saw it in the theater. Did you know that Einstein invented beer and rock and roll? <laughs> I hope he's serious. <laughs> uh, this one is another one star. They're most okay. All of these are pretty much negative because they, they're the ones that were five stars are I find for the most part are just like I love this movie. But this one is... Okay, there's some weird references in here. Not as bad as The Last Airbender or The Happening, but definitely worse than Jonah Hex and Polly Shore's In the Army Now. This is an amazingly horrible film. Gah. Why those movies? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Why two of the four we have done, by the way... Oh, no, sorry, just one of the four. I keep thinking we've done The Last Airbender because I like to pretend that we never have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it'll happen one day. There's one here, and I'm not I'm not gonna read it because, honest <laughs> to God. Uh, but if you if our listeners are interested and they've got a day or two, uh, <laughs> Shane S gave this movie one star and then proceeded to write a goddamn novel on Rotten Tomatoes about his problems with this movie. <laughs> Patreon exclusive. <laughs> and he just ends it with. And I thought Reckless Kelly was a stain upon society. Now I'm glad that movie even exists. At least the Christian cowboy made me chuckle. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this one just says... Okay, this is the most positive one I've got, Nathan. It's 2.5 stars. Hilarious, but I can't give the film full marks, as some of the science is wrong. <laughs> and I do not think... Madame Curie met Einstein? <laughs> also, I don't think that Einstein is Tasmanian. I don't think he was a brewer. I don't think the first atom he split was a beer atom. I don't believe one of the Wright brothers was African American. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Marconi wasn't a, a shock jock shilling for Marconi broadcasting. I don't think the Beagle was an actual Beagle. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so a couple things, a couple things historically inaccurate. <laughs> Terry W. He didn't give this one a rating, uh, mm -hmm. but I like his review because it's short and sweet. 
I remember this film. In its own way, it was funny. <laughs> okay. I like to think sounds he like, gave it five stars. Sounds like a slam in a way. Right? Hey, this, is my last one. this is my last one here. One, one star. It's real quick. All capital letters. Fucking Yahoo Serious? That's it. <laughs> I, I don't think I could top that one. That's... <laughs> Pretty much to the point. Yep. Oh boy. Well, that is that. Now, I guess I should uh, drop a hint ski. Mm hmm. So for our next uh, movie, I will, uh, spoiler alert, I don't know why this is, I'm saying spoiler alert, but I believe Jason is going to join us for the next one. Okay. So you guys can hash it out with each other and fight over me. <laughs> <laughs> fight for my love. Be careful, Brendan. I might end up being co-host of uh, For Screening Country with Jason. Oh, wait. Hold, hold the phone here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so he's gonna come back because he this I because I want I wanted to say that because I wanted to preface this by saying he requested this movie. Okay. So here's your uh, hint: video games in the late nineties. Okay. All right. Uh, so that having been said, would you like to bring in your friend Montrose? Yes. Okay. All right. Up there. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, it's your good friend Montrose Minkington the Third here, and um, I just want to say it was it was intriguing that these two gentlemen talked about young Einstein, uh, but I don't feel that this film was historically accurate. And I think you gentlemen should strive to be better. That being well, said, Montrose, yes, would but... you like to do your best Australian accent? Mm, I can try. Just give me one minute. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Doot, doot, doot! I got an idea! I'm gonna talk about shrimps on Barbies! <laughs> was that, Perfect. Was that, was that accurate? Was that yeah, accurate? that was the best one okay. on the show. Okay, I do, do appreciate that. So, uh, as as I was saying, I, I am here to, to um, shill a bit uh, for my own thing. Uh, Montrose Monkington TV is my YouTube channel. You can check me out. Recently, I've been reviewing um, some hockey since I'm here in Canada. I felt it time to get on board with um, what is roundly considered uh, a national pastime here. Uh, uh, you can uh, check that out again at Montrose Monkington TV on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, f be with me on Facebook, uh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends, and also uh, you can get at me on Twitter at Montrose the Third. That's the number three, R D. Uh, and uh, you can just uh, tweet at me, and I can tweet at you, and and we can be friends on Twitter and the Facebook. Thank you. More later. Thank you, Montrose. It's delightful. I was glad to be here. Uh, and for us, you can find us on uh, all the podcatchers, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Search for us. We'll be there. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Search for us on Facebook, What Were They Thinking? We have a Facebook group, What Were They Thinking Interactive, where you can interact with us. Interactive? Get it? Eh? Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, that's how it works. Yep. Uh, and uh, we also have Redbubble. Just search for us on Redbubble. We're on patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. And I have another podcast as well called For Screen and Country, where we talk about the top 100 British movies. It's, so it's basically the same as this podcast, uh, which you can find by just searching for Screen and Country on various pod catching platforms. So that's, I think that's it. What are you guys going to do after 100 episodes? Uh, maybe a different list. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Yeah, I think just a different top 100 list of something. Hmm. Uh, we're looking at a few different choices, so. Okay. But, for now, mm -hmm. Nathan. Yes. I guess, I guess I have to ask you questions. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if we have enough time to get to all of my questions. Well, you know what, let's, let's, uh, knock as many out as we possibly can. Okay, well, in a movie. Right. Where... You have an Albert Einstein. It's truth. Making rock and roll music. G'day. In a movie. Right. Where Mary Curie. Yeah. Is a romantic hookup with Mr. Einstein. Wallaby. In a movie where 
a man can survive an atomic explosion with just ash on him. Dingo. In a movie where bad guys always have the same first name as the last name. Outback Steakhouse. (laughs) (laughs) In a movie that I don't even know. This movie is wild. I just got to ask you one question. Forsters. What were they thinking? Crikey. <laughs> Crikey, wallaby, and all the other things. Kangaroos, koala bears. <laughs> Marsupial. <laughs> okay, let's get that. Let me hear some of that rock and roll. You can stop now. <laughs> Got a back beat, you can't lose it. Any old time you use it. It's gotta be rock and roll music. If you wanna dance with me. If you wanna dance with me. I have no kick against my to... I'm Nick. And I'm Justin. And we can't believe it's already time for the 2019 live stream for the cure. Thanks to our amazing peers, listeners, and supporters. Last year, we crushed our goal of $5,000 for the Cancer Research Institute. The Cancer Research Institute is funding research into immunotherapy to create a future immune to all forms of cancer. Every single cent we raise goes to them. And they're also rated over 92% on charitynavigator.org. This year, we're aiming our sights even higher with our most ambitious event to date. Join us May 17th through the 19th on twitch.tv slash epicfilmguys for 40 hours of live content from us and other amazing shows who will join us to try to reach $7,500. Please visit www.livestreamforthecure for more information or to find out how you can be a part of the event. Together, we can make a difference. It's late, it's tired, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes of gratuitous movies It's time to get busy with your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Are you ready to enter the sci-fi double feature drive-in? Every month we hold a special double feature with a very interesting theme thought up by your host, the conspiracy-loving Elisa, and yours truly, Jarrett the Kaiju Man Wegelin. We discuss giant monsters, little monsters, genetic abominations, robots gone awry, aliens coming to Earth, cryptids, and anything in between. So join us at the sci-fi double feature drive-in podcast every first and third Thursday of the month. And don't forget to stop by our snack bar first.